Okay, so today we're going to be continuing the series on the cylindrical coil impedance. We're going to be using the same vector network analyzer, the SDR kits DG8 SAQ that I normally use on the website, and we're going to be looking at the impedance characteristics and the tuning um, characteristics for a three coil system. So we're going to be looking at Tesla's extra coil, as he called it. When added to a two coil Tesla transformer, we end up with a three coil Tesla transformer system, as we, we can see in the video here. So we have a primary coil, a secondary coil, and the extra coil. So it becomes a three coil system. Now, so far on my website, I have reported experiments that involve two coil, a two coil system, so that is with the primary coil and the secondary coil, and I've done a lot of different experiments on the transference of electric power and uh, telluric transference of electric power using this coil system. Now, just to put that into perspective, I'm going to just move that over for a moment and I'm going to bring the two coil system in. Which looks like this. Make sure that comes out in the video. Yes, okay, so the two coil system. Okay, so these are the cylindrical coils um, that I've been using, um, as I just said, for transference of electric power experiments and the telluric work. They were designed for the 160 meter amateur band in this two coil Tesla transformer configuration with a primary and a secondary. Um, and obviously a, a, a tuning capacitor as well, which allows us to take fine adjustment of the parallel modes. So the series mode um, and actually the parallel mode of the system can be tuned into the 160 meter amateur band. And um, there's been a lot of data reported on these, um, using these um, as TMT, Tesla's magnifying transformer systems, uh, both over short range um, in the very near midfield region and right out into the far field. Now, in taking the characteristics of this system, a two coil system to a three coil system, changes the dynamics completely. Um, we'll see that in the input impedance. Um, now, if I just hold this up to see what we've done, I've essentially taken an identical cylindrical coil and I've turned it onto its side take this away now I've turned it onto its side so that the extra coil can basically stand in the middle let's put this back and we see that also uh, we have fine tuning on both the extra coil and on the secondary coil as well so we've got a telescopic area on both and that's going to be quite important um, to set up. So what we want to be able to do is take, go from the characteristics that we would normally expect for a tuned two coil system and tune a three coil system so it can be used in a similar for experiment. For example, this coil system is currently being used in the transatlantic telluric transference of electric power experiments that we're, that I'm busy doing with the United States and this system had to be reconfigured and retuned um, so that it will work um, at, the, at the band that we are using which is still the 160 meter amateur band which is one point and specifically 1.86 mega cycles. Now if I just add a coil like this um, to a to what I had before, this is what I had before, um, what I've done is I've removed the other stand so it's easier to work with, but otherwise the configuration of the primary and the secondary is exactly the same um, as it was when it was a two coil Tesla transformer. And the primary in this case can, can slide inside, um, I deliberately designed it that way, um, so you get very good control over the magnetic coupling coefficient K. So. Simply adding 
Tesla's extra coil to make it a three coil system, changes its impedance characteristics and its tuning characteristics entirely. If I connect this extra coil to the top end of the, or the hot end of the, of the secondary coil, it's no longer going to have a series mode at 1.86 megacycles or parallel mode at that frequency. Um, we're going to get interaction between those, those two coils and when two resonant systems come together and they are connected or they are coupled, then they influence each other. Energy is passed backwards and forwards between these two coils and we get what's called frequency splitting and the characteristics of both coils are pushed to lower and higher frequencies. So this system would no longer in its current form be suitable for the 160 meter amateur band. To do the uh, telluric or transference of electric power experiments we need to be able to tune our generator to a specific series mode frequency or a parallel mode if we're working directly with the parallel modes. So we would no longer be able to tune the linear amplifier to 1.86 megacycles and drive this coil system because those frequencies are just not, not the case anymore um, because of the frequency splitting, because of the interaction between the two coils. So we've got to completely retune and readjust the system. That involves the distances of the coils from each other and it also involves the number of windings and their coupling um, and fine tuning based on the telescopic antennas. And this is what this um, experiment, this video experiment is all about. Is So is taking a two coil system and turning it into a properly tuned three coil system. And we're gonna start with um, the basic two coil system. So I haven't changed anything um, about the two coil system. I have added um, um, the extra coil in the middle, but currently it's not connected. So here is the fly lead um, of the, and that will connect directly into the top end um, of the, or the hot end of the secondary coil, right where our wire length tuning elements are. So that's a good point to note. The um, telescopic aerials allow us to adjust the, the wire length, and we know from previous analysis that the wire length is most responsible for the series mode frequency. And then the, the parallel mode is much more sensitive to geometry, arrangement, um, and we've got good control over that using the primary tuning capacitor. So just to look at the in detail in some of the systems, I'm going to unhook the camera um, from here and bring it in close so we can have a look at some of the features. So as I said, underneath, let's come around this side, we've got the... Um, primary tuning capacitor, exactly as we had on the two coil um, um, system when we stand it upright. That is connected into the primary circuit here, which we see here. Um, and that goes into configurable primary coil, which is up to four turns. And we've currently got um, the two wires configured in the connectors for four turns. Now also on the secondary coil, we can see here, we've got a number of inline connectors. This is how I actually reduce the, the wire length of an active coil. So currently this secondary coil is suitable for 160 meter amateur, but these inline connectors, they can be pulled apart and you can reduce sections of wire. So on the first section going from uh, the bottom here it goes round for four turns and then comes to another connector. So first of all, I could remove four turns from the bottom of that coil. And then for fine adjustment, I've got a turn at a time for the next two turns after that. And then all the way the turns are fixed up to the top. And that allows us to adjust the wire length because we are going to need to adjust the wire length and I'll show why that is um, shortly. So then we come to the top of the coil. There we have the final end of the um, copper shield turn at the hot end, um, connected directly to the base of the telescopic antenna. 
and then the extra coil there's the fly lead for the extra coil and the extra coil is also designed to a certain specification I will put that into the write up now this extra coil has already been adjusted to be correct for a three coil system but it's, it's how you set that up it is exactly as we do for the secondary so I'm going to show it with the secondary and that also then applies to the to the extra coil and that also has its telescopic mast you can see that originally this extra coil those black marks defines the starting point and all of those turns were removed um, up to where it currently is now and that coil is suitable for this three coil Tesla transformer system we've also got um, the ground system um, so this is the base of the secondary coil and we see there we have a zero AWG um, very large cable that goes outside to the uh, uh, receiving uh, system that I a uh, ground system that I use for the telluric experiments between the two labs that's already reported on the website so let me put the camera back now we've had a detailed look at what we've got in the configuration of the coil get that readjusted Right, okay, so the first thing I'm going to have a look at is I'm going to have a look at the characteristics of the two coil system and what they look at without connecting the extra coil. Now the extra coil is okay here, it won't significantly influence um, the characteristics of these two coils until I connect it. It is sufficiently far away from the primary and from the secondary not to have um, a significant coupling uh, magnetic coupling K will be low, typically less than um, 0 0.01 um, and that's not going to impact significantly on our results. In other words, we won't actually see that coil in the impedance characteristics until we actually connect it. When we do connect it, we're going to be connecting it via this short fly lead up to the top. Okay. And also I've arranged um, this so that these are the original spacers um, to make everything right for the two coil system and we're going to obviously be making adjustments there as well. We have to get to get the tuning right for three coil Tesla transformer for the telluric work in the 160 band. Um, we're going to need to adjust the geometry of some of this as well. Now before we get stuck into that um, Let's just look at what is the advantage of using a three coil system over a two coil system. Well, the three coil system has very significantly different properties um, than a two coil system, and in, to, particularly when it comes down to the cavity. So, if we go back in a Tesla transformer, and we consider that a Tesla transformer is a, is a transverse to longitudinal mode transformer if it's properly configured and set up correctly. Now, when you have an additional extra coil here, essentially you have multiple cavities. So you have cavity, you have a longitudinal cavity that can be set up between uh, across the secondary coil and between that and the extra coil and within the extra coil itself. And when you interact that with the parallel modes of the primary, you get quite a lot of control over the cavity tuning. And that leads to um, very interesting properties um, for transference of electric power in a, in a, in a three, using a three coil system and in actual fact some of the conclusions that I made from uh, the telluric works have done reported so far and particularly with the Brookmans Park or Crystal, Crystal Radio Initiative experiment is that a three coil system may be needed to help draw that power through the ground um, when the distances are very significant um, or you're doing experiments um, where you want to connect the longitudinal mode to lyrically between the so-called transmitter and receiver. So in other words, we end up with a, with a longitudinal connected coherent cavity between there where we can pass power. That is what we are ultimately trying to uh, research and what we are trying to validate in terms of Tesla's original principles. And the three coil system adds considerably more control over the longitudinal cavity um, whether we emphasize the cavity with the extra coil the cavity all the way um, from the top end of the extension through the coil 
through the interconnection, through the secondary coil, and then reflected into the primary um, through magnetic coupling. So, um, adjusting that cavity, and we can adjust by using the primary um, coupling, sorry, the primary tuning capacitor, we can adjust the, um, whether we emphasize the cavity with the, uh, the longitudinal cavity, the LMD mode, with the extra coil, or whether we emphasize that with the, with the secondary coil. And it leads to um, a lot of interesting experiments um, and results um, that we're going to look at in more detail in the um, transatlantic telluric experiment. And I will do another field trip with the Brookmans Park and see whether or not that can, that can make a difference um, to, to um, the amount of power that we could actually extract through the ground in a longitudinal mode from a, a broadcast radio transmitter. Of course, we will be using the, the Brookmans Park coil for that because we'll be down at 909 kilocycles, whereas this experiment, this coil is designed, going to be designed for running at 1.86 megacycles. So that's the reason, primary reason, I, I believe, for using a three for the advantages of a three coil Tesla transformer system over a two coil system or a one coil system. We've so far explored one and two coil systems in quite a lot of detail. So on the um, vector network analyzer characteristics, I'll just show we how we are running from 500 kilocycles up to six megacycles. Um, we have already calibrated the system. Um, it is connected um, down to the ground system, and that's a very important point to make about when in tuning and setting up any Tesla transformer, regardless of the number of coils um, that it has, one, two, or three, or more, it needs to be set up actually within the experiment. So, for example, if I disconnect the ground system at the bottom end of the secondary, so this lead is now flying, that is going to change the whole tuning of the entire test transformer. Um, because now we have changed the wire length. We've essentially pushed the secondary coil into a more half wavelength characteristic than a quarter wavelength, and that's going to affect the dynamics of the entire system. So if we want to tune and set up a Tesla transformer properly, it's got to be done in situ with everything connected. So I've got the primary tuning capacitor connected to the, uh, the primary coil. Um, it's fully wound out at the moment, so it's fully wound so that it's, it's, the plates are not um, overlapping with each other, and that takes it down to about just its lowest value of about um, 15 to 20 picofarads. So at the moment it's having the minimum influence, but it is connected to the circuit. Um, I'm making primary fed measurements at the end of the day because this is how I'm going to be driving it. I could do, of course I can characterize each of these coils individually um, by doing series fed measurements on the coils. That will give me results. We've done a lot of that on the website. But that would also land up in a situation where we characterize the individual coils and not the combination of the coils as it's actually going to be used in the experiment. And we want to set this up specifically as it's going to be used in the experiment so we, so we an, end up being able to drive this system at 1.86 megacycles. So that means that we need to have the ground system that we're going to be using actually in the experiments properly connected which we have, we've got that connected here. Um, we need to have the primary tuning capacitor connected. We need to have all coils configured in the right place. Now, I haven't got them configured in the right place for a three coil system at the moment because I'm gonna start from a two. I first of all, in this video experiment, want to show the, the characteristics of the two coil system, and then we'll move to the three coil system, piece by piece. So if I look at the, um, the characteristics on, from the Vector Network Analyzer, I'm going to take a scan. Okay, so we've got, uh, that's a typical characteristic um, for primary fed. 
Um, we are measuring here predominantly the characteristics of the secondary coil. There is nothing in the phase relation or the impedance relation that would suggest that the, we are picking up anything to do with the extra coil and our impedance will start to rise up here as we go to the parallel mode of the, of the primary which exists somewhere at a higher frequency at the moment because we, we, we have the primary tuning capacitor at its lowest possible value. As we wind that up so the parallel mode um, or increase the primary tuning capacitor the parallel mode will basically move down in frequency and start influencing uh, the cavity um, relationship of the with the secondary coil. So if we look at the frequencies that we've currently got, well, um, we're, marker one is at 1.86 megacycles. The parallel mode is almost exactly um, on that. So uh, we could obviously make a small adjustment um, on that um, to get that exactly in the right place. We just reduce the uh, length here, the wire length at the top end, take another measurement and there we are. So marker one is now right at the top, 1.86 megacycles, and that is a point, one of the points that we used for the telluric transference of electric power experiments so far. Now if I want to put that at the series mode, then I need to pull everything down um, um, a bit further. So for example, I might um, extend the, length, the wire length by increasing the telescopic aerial. Nothing to do with the extra coil, ignore that, that could be taken away completely. It's not in, in, and now you see we've even gone too far. I'm going to put this on continuous, I'm going to make some small adjustments with the, with the wire length. I've got the camera on as well so you can see what I'm actually adjusting. Okay, so that's quite close. So that's now the series mode. There. So marker one is now. Let me just turn off that little scan. Marker one is now at the series mode, 1.86 megacycles. 41.4 ohm input impedance. Quite nicely arranged that coil um, because it's very close to the 50 ohm system impedance, which makes it very easy um, to match directly to a generator system with, with very little additional loading. Remember in the telluric experiments, we use a T-tuner, the PowerStar 85K, which is a, which is a T-network tuner, um, and that makes it very easy to tune um, as the transmitter um, when the um, system impedance of 50 ohms, but the linear amplifier is already very close um, to the input impedance. Phase shift, full phase shift, um, this is um, rat's phase, um, so that means that it indicates very well where the actual point of resonance is for the series mode, so and this is the lower parallel mode. Upper parallel mode um, in a balanced system would be right up here, um, and actually we can demonstrate that quickly just to recap our two coil system properly. So if I wind in tuning capacitor there we see we see in the characteristics we see the upper and lower parallel modes we bring it down to the balance point. The balance point is where the magnitude of the impedance that's the blue line is, is equal. So that's the best balance point for a Tesla transformer. In a sense you've got the best match between the primary system and the secondary system uh, from a transverse point of view. We can obviously do very fine adjustments, taking single sweeps. I'm trying not to get too close to the coil system because obviously that, that influences how it looks. There we are. So now in balance. 
that's the bounce point and that's how we've so we've basically we've we've optimized um, the carity from um, the LND mode point of view um, between the secondary and the primary we have a, a lower parallel mode here we have a upper parallel mode and then we have where marker one still is we have the series mode so that's typically our analysis so far that we've done we've gone into a lot of detail about the two coil system so now to turn it into a three coil system first of all I'm going to take the primary back out completely I don't want the primary tuning capacitor affecting our initial setup give that a sweep and we see where we get to so our series mode 1.86 mega cycles I could go in a little bit more detail and get that right in the right place there the actual place of the resonance itself is where the phase change takes place and I can go in, in even more detail and adjust so until my phase hits zero close as I can get to zero with the marker go even in more detail there 0 0.09 zoom it so there in the center of the phase change and we can see that we're actually at slightly low frequency we're at 1.84 megacycles so of course I can adjust that with the wire length again to get that right on 1.86 so for this I'm going to put this marker back on 1.86 I'm going to now connect in the extra coil, leaving everything else the same, not adjusting the wire length at this stage or anything like that. I'll take another scan. Okay. Now we see that we have another characteristics here. It's only a small one at the moment. But this is the effect of this is the effect of our extra coil. Here is our secondary coil steer, here is our extra coil, and we see that marker that I left at 1, at 1.86 megacycles, the characteristics for the secondary coil has, has moved, and quite considerably. And of course we would expect it to, because there is now an interaction going on with the extra coil. We cannot simply just say that the wire length has increased. The reason the wire length has not increased is because um, there is the clear boundary of the end of one coil and then there is the beginning of the boundary of the next coil and they are outside of the magnetic coupling distance. So therefore these are two distinct coils. There's not just an extension of the, of the secondary coil. This is often a mistake made of the idea that you can make a secondary and extra coil all as one coil. It's not the same. The characteristics of the two coils, the secondary and the extra, connected with a direct series connection here is a very different characteristic to simply adding more turns on the secondary coil. If you were just adding more turns on the secondary coil, you would be increasing its wire length and the series mode would move down. Of course. But by connecting them in this way, you have connected two resonant coil systems together the extra and the secondary, and that has a different impact on the, on the results. So if we go back to the results, we can see if we take this second marker, now I'm going to leave the 1.86 down, down to the series mode here, approximately in the right place, keep it consistent at the bottom, we've now moved 1.55 megacycles down. And this is quite characteristic, so that the, depending on the degree of coupling, between the two, you can move as far as five to six hundred kilocycles lower by connecting the two. And also, the characteristic of the um, the characteristic of the extra coil is also pushed up. So, if I add another marker and I look at the series point there, three two point six six. 
megacycles. So that has also been pushed up. Um, in this case, um, this is pushed down 300 kilocycles, and this one would have been pushed up around about 200 kilocycles. The and we're going to measure this in a minute, the free wire length series mode of the single coil, they're around about um, 2.35 to 2.45 kilocycles, each for the secondary and the extra. Now this is also an important detail, is what frequency do you set each coil to? Well, that depends on how you want it to work. So in this case, we want to maximize the cavity strength between the extra coil and the secondary coil coupled with the primary. So therefore, we want the maximum amount of energy exchange between um, the, the extra coil and the secondary coil. And that means basically them um, having the same quarter wavelength resonant. So as an individual one coil, they will have a, a quarter wavelength frequency and if we want maximum exchange of energy between the two coils, then we make that frequency the same. So if I was to measure each of these individually, they would have a very similar characteristic at a very similar wire length series mode, even though their geometry is so specifically different. And that will give us the maximum exchange of energy between, between the two coils. Anywhere diverging from that, we will reduce the amount of energy. If this was at two megacycles and this was at three megacycles, the exchange of energy would actually be really low um, between, between the two. So, choice of frequency for each the individual cores for the extra core and the secondary core is important. Um, from the experiments that I've made, I choose to make the, the series mode that's based on the wire length of each of these individual coils as close together as possible to the same frequency. Then I can ensure that there is a maximum energy transfer across that crack cavity um, between the two coils. And that leads to um, um, obviously the frequency splitting and in this case it's about 300 kilocycles lower than where we wanted and about 200 kilocycles above. So marker 2 is at 1.55 megacycles and marker 3 is at 2.66 megacycles. And now this system is currently not suitable for be driven in the 160 meter amateur band. The 160 meter amateur band somewhere around, um, well, is right at the lower end say so that 1.8 is there, that doesn't correspond to either of the series or parallel modes um, available with this coil this time, and up to two megacycles, which is just around here. Again, we are not in the bands that we want to be. We want to drive this three core system properly at the series mode, either here or here, at 1.86 megacycles, either of those points. Now, if we wanted to, so if we want to drive this point at 1.86 megacycles, we are going to have to reduce the wire length in the coil system so that marker 2 will, or that minimum, that series mode there will move upwards to 1.86 megacycles. Let's just set one back to 1.86. Or, if we want to draw this series mode, we can nominally say at the moment that that is from the extra coil. If we want to drive the extra coil series mode at 1.86 megacycles, we've got to increase the wire length in order to draw this point, marker 3, down to 1.86 megacycles. So, we have first of all got to do wire length adjustment. Now, I can say that the wire length in the, in the extra coil is currently correct. So, it is already correctly set up for this system, but the secondary coil is not. So, first of all, we'd, let's take a measure of the extra coil. And to do that, essentially what we do, um, is I'm going to remove 
the secondary coil just to leave the extra and then we'll just do a measurement on that on its own. So if I just put this down for the moment, these are only hand tight, these screws, I can remove these as such. Removed. This one is removed too. Oh, I come off there. We take that and we put that away, well away from the. Um, and then we are left with just the primary and the extra coil. Now. I don't want to change any of the drive system, we're still using the same parallel system, the capacitor is fully wound out, um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the extra coil right down onto the top of the primary coil. That will allow us to measure it directly in a primary fed measurement but it's not coupled, it's directly seriously connected, so it sits on top of the primary coil. The primary coil is the driven part, um, and um, the extra coil sits and resonates on top of that driven section. It's surprisingly accurate. It is another form of series feeding using the primary. Okay, so now if we look at this characteristic, um, I'm going to bring marker 3, down to the series mode and we see what kind of frequency we're at. Let me blow this up a little. Bring it down to... Okay, 2.43 megacycles, marker 3. The reason that this is smaller and it's not large, um, like the well-defined, like the secondary, is because of the way we're measuring it. We're measuring it at the top end of the primary coil. But I don't want to change any of the other characteristics. I want to know what this extra coil looks like in situ. And this is its characteristic. So 2.43 megacycles is the series mode um, of, the, of the extra coil, with the wire length as it is at the top. Now I like to use a bit of, leave a bit of wire length here, so I've got a bit of an extension because it allows me to go to higher frequency with it down and to lower frequency when it's up. So it gives me a bit of adjustment. Without that um, telescopic aerial on the top, we would have no adjustment of that coil other than adjust adjusting the turns, which mechanically requires quite a lot of effort. So putting this on the top allows us that additional tuning flexibility. And I'm going to leave it at the extension that it's at. We measure that extension there, and then we note that, um, and that is our essentially our starting place. So 2.43 megacycles. Okay, so that was a, and that was that is how this coil system is arranged. So in other words, I'd already worked out empirically that these two coils, the extra coil and the secondary coil need to be adjusted or initially configured to a series mode of around about 2.35 to 2.45 in order for the three core system to go together correctly. Okay, so we disconnect this coil again. Let's put the secondary coil back in situ. arranged this way to make it easy easy to configure. So I'm going to just put the screw back in, hold it in place. These can be just little plastic screws. just a little just to keep it in the correct center position okay so let me put some extension back on here I'll put two sections of the telescopic aerials the default so we keep the extension of the two 
um, about the same. I reconnect the bottom end. We must have that because this is how it's actually going to be run. Remember, we would be the longitudinal mode will be extending out through the wire down into the down into the ground in the ground system. So now we take a measure of the secondary coil, and we need to get the secondary coil series mode as close as practically possible with um, with the, the wire length. We need to get that to the extra coil. So we take a scan first of all to see where we are. We can see it's obviously back where it was, it's very low. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do um, is I'm actually going to remove some of the windings on the secondary coil. Now the windings are kept in place down here um, with the tie wrap. So if I simply remove the bottom tie wrap from the secondary coil, that's release that, and I can release the turns. Should check the camera. I can release these turns round. Now, if you were doing this for the first time, you'd be backing it off a turn at a time. But I know that's why I've arranged these connectors. I can simply remove the entire wire length. I removed three turns there. If you would, again, as I said, if you're doing it for the first time, you remove one turn at a time and measure your frequency. That was how I originally did it when I first set up. And we can put that wire aside. I keep that wire as connectable because when I want to use it as a two coil system, I still have the right wire length. And now I have a bottom end there. We can connect the ground system back. Now we take another, another scan of the system. Okay, so now we can see the characteristic has moved up considerably. Up to about 2.2 megacycles. Now, we say, well, that's not exactly as close yet um, to around about 2.43 which we had at marker 3 which was our extra coil but we also first of all need to take into another consideration and first of all is the distance from the primary if we now look here the secondary I've taken through previously the coil ended right down at the bottom turn here and now I've taken three turns of wire off and in actual fact, the base of the coil is now considerably further away. And here's the top of the primary coil. So we actually now have quite a large distance. So the coupling, magnetic coupling coefficient K is also reduced considerably in just that spacing. So now I need to make um, a physical adjustment. I need to, otherwise my, and one can see um, in the characteristic, that it's actually not very large. I mean, I could scale it so it was bigger, but I wanted to keep it on the same scale um, here so we can, we can see how things change. So I need to bring the secondary coil closer to the primary coil. Now, that's also gonna change some of the physical relationship with the, with the extra coil. The most optimum alignment that I found is that the top of the extra coil, in this case the magnetic guard ring, is actually on about level with the bottom winding of the extra coil. So at the moment we've got that set correctly. So if we take physically take the secondary coil down, we're also going to need to take the extra coil down as well, if we want to get into the optimum scenario. So if I make these adjustments, Again, I will 
I need to remove the secondary coil. Let's remove that screw and the one at the back that I placed in very gently. Let me take away this coil. Put that aside for a moment. I'm going to undo these original spacers that were there to, that correctly arranged the distance between the two coils for a two coil system. But now we're a three coil system. And I'm going to bring the secondary coil back in. And that sits down. And now the secondary coil has gone over the primary coil and we've brought it right down to essentially there's about a one inch gap in diameter. A one inch dif distance between the, the top of the primary coil and the bottom of the, the new bottom of the reduced Y length secondary coil, which is about optimum. One can adjust a little bit, you can reduce the number of turns. Um, so there's a, there is some empirical tuning that can be done here as well. But obviously I have the system already set up. A three coil system, I've done that empirical tuning before. Um, we're not going to connect the extra coil at the moment. So we've brought the secondary coil now closer to the primary. We, we take another sweep. And we immediately see now the, the, there's considerably more coupling, magnetic coupling between the primary and the secondary. And that's good um, in this scenario. And we also look at the frequency. So we've got to bring marker one back down to the series mode. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Somewhere around there. 2.36 and our extra coil was at 2.43 so I just reduce this a little bit reduce the Y length on the secondary and adjust it very slightly 2.43 And I could adjust it down a little bit further, of course, and it will be exactly on 2.43. So now, our, if we recap for a moment, our secondary coil, we've reduced, took and taken three turns off. We have brought it closer to the primary coil to compensate for the turns that we've taken off. And hence, um, we, don't, we keep the magnetic coupling coefficient K high enough that we get a good characteristic and we can see the, the characteristic here we've got a large phase good strong phase change at the resonant series resonant mode and the magnitude of the um, um, impedance um, is also increased and our series mode for the secondary coil based on wire length and our series mode for the extra coil based on wire length is we can make it exactly the same in this case it's 2.41 and 2.43 markers 1 and 3 I left marker 3 deliberately at the point where we did the extra coil measurement okay so from there we now sit with a reasonable distance um, between the top of these two coils so the first thing for me to do is to get us into a, an optimal geometric um, um, position and I'm going to remove the extra coil. These are conveniently made so that they unscrew. So I can adjust the height by putting another spacer in or removing one. Okay, so I take that, that coil out. I remove the
remove the spacer. I have another spacer, a shorter one. So this was the one we were just using. I have a shorter one. Screw that in place. Gently screw the, the extra coil back. We tighten that in. Okay, so now the, again, the top of the shield or guard ring for the secondary is about the, the bottom of the extra coil, beginning of the bottom end. Put our connection back in. Connect it up to the secondary coil. Everything else the same. Now we take another scan. So now we have the secondary coil and the extra coil have the same series mode resonance, so we're going to get maximum energy exchange across that cavity between the two. Take another scan and now we see in our characteristics we've got the Effect due to the secondary, effect due to the extra coil. We've got the two series modes, two parallel modes. And now I'm going to bring, this was where we configured markers one and three, we had configured um, for the individual secondary and individual extra. Now I'm going to bring marker two down to our new frequency. where we want it at 1.86 let's find out where that is 1.87 so I'm going to place that on 1.86 which is there so you see we're slightly series mode is slightly off so we're going to make some small tuning changes just to get that lower series mode of 1.86 just going to in Increase the wire length slightly, It'll take us further away. It's going to reduce the wire length, the top end of the extra coil, so that brings us nicely down there. Okay, so marker two is at 1.86 megacycles. Okay, so with the extra coil now lower down in the coil system, we see that the lower series mode that corresponds to the series mode of the secondary coil is now at the 1.86 megacycles that we want it to be. We notice that the parallel modes are reasonably balanced. We have strong phase relationship from the secondary coil but we see that the extra coil the phase relationship is 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 less and this brings us on to a point now that we need to consider about the balance between the secondary coil and the extra coil something that we haven't discussed so far is uh, magnification so one of the great advantages of having a three coil system and having an extra coil in there is the degree of magnification that you can get. After all, the TMT or Tesla's magnifying transmitter, um, one of the strongest qualities is the magnification that is going on, the transformation from the transverse mode to the longitudinal mode or the, or the transverse electromagnetic mode, the 10 mode, to the longitudinal magnetodielectric mode in the cavity. 
and the magnification that goes on, the advantage of the three coil system is we can get considerably more magnification than we can with a two coil system. But in order to arrange that, we need to make sure that both the secondary and the extra coil are resonating as freely as possible. So there is as much exchange of energy between the secondary coil and the extra coil as possible. We've already set the frequencies very close to each other at markers 1 and 3. We were at 2.41 and 2.43 megacycles. So that ensures maximum exchange, but we also need to make sure that the coils are as possibly freely resonating. So as much energy is, in, is stored in each before being transferred and passed back to the other one. Now in this case, we lowered down the extra coil in order to um, bring uh, the base of the extra coil um, approximately in line with the top or the hot end of the secondary coil. Now we also reduce down the secondary coil to be closer um, to the primary coil and because of the turns that we took off of the secondary coil. Now that was good and we see that we have a strong resonant characteristic in the secondary coil but the extra coil has now become too close to the primary coil and that in itself is loading um, the extra coil and that is essentially reducing this phase characteristic and we want to try to maximise that phase characteristic. We want as much free oscillation, especially at the top end of our carity, um, in the extra coil. So in this case I'm going to put the long um, spacer back in and then we make a comparison um, with, with the characteristic that we have now. Okay, so let me just do that. Just take that Keep everything else the same. Remove the extra coil. Set. Remove the spacer. That was a short spacer. And we're going to go back to the long spacer and have a look at the difference. We want to try to get maximum coupled free resonance of the extra coil as possible. Ideally we'd like those the phase relationship of the secondary and the phase relationship of the extra coil to be as equal and large as possible. Reattach the the extra coil. I'm going to put the patch lead back in. Okay, so we've now raised up the extra coil back to where it was when we began before adjusting the secondary. And we take a measurement of that. Good. Let me just take another measurement. Good, let me just move the markers to where we can see them. So now this, the extra coil phase has now increased. It is coming towards uh, the maximum swing, which we also see in the secondary. Still not as full, and that still suggests to me that is a little bit over coupled so it's been driven a little bit too hard what I'm going to do is I've currently got four turns in the primary I'm going to reduce that to three that will of course reduce the magnitude of impedance slightly but at the we'll see what that does to the to the phase relationship of the extra coil 
So I can do that by moving the jumper from four turns to three turns. And we take another scan. Excellent, even better. Take another scan. So now we see, as we expected, we reduce slightly the magnitude of the impedance. Um, since we have reduced the coupling, magnetic coupling coefficient slightly uh, between the primary and the secondary. But what we've also done is we've got to a situation where the extra coil through the secondary coil across the cavity is now resonating in its optimum. So in other words, it is not being loaded by the coupling between the primary and the secondary coil. And there we see we have maximized phase relationship. Let's just check our series mode frequency. See if we need to adjust. I'm going to zoom in a little. And that is marker two at 1.86 megacycles. Going to add another marker. Down in the series mode of the back in the middle of the phase relationship for the extra coil. Do a marker for 2.89 megacycles. So, if we recap, we reduced the number of turns or the wire length on the secondary by four turns, that brought it down. Um, um, to approximately the um, correct wire length um, that we wanted. We then brought it closer to reduce the gap uh, between the primary and the secondary. Uh, we brought the secondary coil uh, physically um, closer to the primary coil. There is now about a one inch um, gap between the two. That put us in a situation where the lower series mode which is belonging to the secondary, was at 1.86 megacycles. We also reduced the extra coil, but that loaded the extra coil too sufficiently by putting it too close in proximity to the primary. We raised that up again, um, which improved its free resonance. And then we also reduced the number of turns on the primary from four to three. Which has again, um, increased the free resonance or the total magnification of the system, the extra coil and the secondary coil are resonating as freely as they can, coupled together in a three coil system. Maximum energy exchange uh, between the secondary and the extra coil, the phase relationship of maximum um, and the parallel modes are not exactly balanced but they are reasonably close to each other. And that is a very nice starting point for a three coil system. We haven't engaged the primary yet. I'm gonna actually bring the primary in. At the moment, the primary is fully wound out um, at 20 picofarads. We want to see, as we start to adjust the primary, how do we affect the cavity tuning between the extra coil with the secondary coil, and what does that ca overall characteristic look like? So I'm gonna put this on to continuous sweep, and I'm gonna slowly wind in the primary tuning capacitor right 
till there. So there we have the parallel mode um, from the primary. It's just come in at the top end of the scan. We already see that the parallel mode due to the extra coil is already starting to, to rise up. So there's now more difference between the parallel mode of the extra and the parallel mode of the secondary coil. Keep winding that in. Gradually increasing primary tuning capacitor. Secondary, quite small, extra, parallel mode now rising up to meet as those parallel modes become very similar in frequency. Remember the frequency splitting is going on in the parallel mode. We see that the parallel mode top is off the top so we're going to just rescale a little. So we can see the top of the parallel modes, very close to balance point. Do some very fine adjustments. Pause it there. Okay. So now what we've done is we've increased the primary tuning capacitance, um, the peak from the parallel mode from the primary and the parallel mode from the extra coil are now, the magnitude of the impedance is, is balanced or is equal. And in effect we have here emphasized the cavity, the longitudinal cavity formed between the primary and the extra coil. That is the match that we have actually put in place here. So by adjusting that primary tuning capacitance we are able to selectively control the tuning of the LMD cavity. Remember the primary mode is most associated with the longitudinal magnetodielectric mode um, within the Tesla transformer and here we've basically emphasized that cavity with the primary and the extra coil. much more than with the secondary coil. So now we're going to continue, put this back onto continuous, and we're going to move through that balance point. Okay, so we see the, this now, because of the frequency splitting, remember at the balance mode, you are at the point where the two parallel modes, if they were separated, would be exactly at the same frequency. But because of the interaction of the parallel modes, the energy being transferred backwards and forwards between those resonators, the parallel modes are split. And that's why we get the two peaks. If I was to draw them apart, the coils apart, as I've demonstrated in other experiments on the website, we will gradually see um, these two peaks get closer and closer and closer until they're out, they are no longer coupled with each other and we're just left with one peak of the coil that's currently connected to the measurement system. So now we see, because of that splitting, the parallel mode of the extra coil, now represented at the upper, is now falling off and the parallel mode of the primary is now going to a lower, lower frequency. Of course, series mode is right up off the top of the scan. We would find that, that phase change um, up somewhere around about the 10 megacycle um, point. Very big difference obviously, between the um, series mode and parallel mode because of the large imbalance in the primary coil. It's 
parasitic or intrinsic capacitance, self capacitance is much lower and its ductance is much higher. So the imbalance in that causes a large difference um, between the parallel mode and the series mode. Not the same situation for the secondary and for the extra and where there are many more turns and the distributed inductance and capacitance of the coil are more even, more balanced in its resonant mode. Okay, so we can we keep going down. We can see the parallel mode of the primary now between the characteristics of the extra and the secondary. We see the extra parallel mode of the extra coil now falling off and we see that the parallel mode of the secondary now starting to rise up as it comes into interaction with the parallel mode of the primary. Quite small changes, it's quite sensitive. Getting close to the balance point for now the secondary. about there. I'll just stop that for a moment. Okay, so now we have adjusted the primary tuning capacitor to a higher capacitance and that has brought the parallel mode um, of the primary into balance with the parallel mode of the secondary coil. And the magnitude of the impedance of those parallel modes is equal. Here we have basic, and we see that the extra core parallel mode has fallen right off. We still have the strong phase relationship, so both cores are still resonating, they're still exchanging energy, there's still considerable magnification, and we have emphasized the cavity between the secondary coil and the primary. So in other words, the that LMD cavity formed in the Tesla transformer is now at its strongest between the secondary and the primary. Whereas before, when we balanced it with the extra, it was strongest between the extra and the primary. And both of these conditions appear to have um, different characteristics and they seem to perform differently through my measurements, they seem to perform differently when you are working with a TMT system or um, say for example a telluric transference of electric power. That emphasizing the secondary cavity like this is best for the transmitter and emphasizing the extra coil cavity for the receiver and so far in my experiments I found maximum gain across the system or maximum transference of power occurs in that condition when you have the parallel modes balance or the cavity balanced around the secondary and the primary for the transmitter and the between the extra and the primary taking into account the secondary in the middle of that cavity for the receiver. That's work in progress, needs much more exploration and data in order to understand what is going on there. But as I said at the beginning, the three coil system, you are looking at the cavity in a TMT system between the, uh, the, the, the transmit and the receive. Um, the most optimum condition is to try to get that longitudinal mode to extend over whatever distance between the transmitter and the receiver. And the three core system gets, gives the maximum flexibility. This is still, a, I'm conjecturing, that a three core system can also be used not only to push the longitudinal mode, but can also be used to draw the longitudinal mode of the receiver. And as a result of that, you have an overlap of the longitudinal mode within whatever it, um, transmission medium, whether it's single wire, whether it's telluric, 
and you have the best opportunity to try to establish coherent longitudinal mode across the entire TMT system. So if we continue to go even to lower frequency with the primary tuning capacitor, we're going to bring that parallel mode we start to see the secondary parallel mode here and the extra parallel mode, very small now. We wind the capacitor fully in, it's about 1200, just over 1200 picofarads of capacitive loading in parallel on the primary. That is this peak here and we see that we have collapsed or reduced the primary mode, the, the parallel mode, sorry, of the secondary and almost completely collapsed the parallel mode of the extra. And also we've considerably reduced its magnification. So in other words, the capacity, that we are now over, overloaded. We have over um, capacitively loaded the system and in a, in a result, we are drawing down the free resonance of the system. And we've again, we collapse this, the phase relationship of the extra coil. Still okay with the, with the secondary coil, but in a way we've kind of started to remove the, the effect of having the, the extra coil there in the first place. The series mode, relatively unchanged, still at 1.86 megacycles defined by the various wire lengths. Um, that remains largely constant which is why it's best to tune the series modes with the wire length changes and hence um, fine tuning on the telescopic aerials and fine tuning of the parallel modes largely comes through uh, uh, small geometric changes, um, loading changes um, and um, also um, through that loading coming through the capacitive loading of the primary tuning capacitor. So winding back out again, we go back up slowly, see all the important points. Don't have to go too far for the extra coil to start resonating more strongly. We're heading back to maximizing the cavity, the longitudinal cavity with the secondary coil. Reach that balanced point there. Secondary and extra coil are resonating good magnification across the entire system. Both the secondary and the extra freely resonating while coupled together. Continue upwards. Primary parallel mode moving back towards the extra coil. Strong phase relationship maintained between the two coils. Series modes largely staying the same. Slightly overshot there. Very sensitive. There's the balance condition for the for the extra, the primary. Strong characteristic. And we continue to wind out the, the primary right up so that it, the capacitor, the primary capacitor is fully wound out. And then we're back to our, our default mode, which is reasonably well balanced. Um, I will just increase the scale on the, then we get a clearer view, let's increase it a bit more. Okay, on the magnitude of the impedance, the blue characteristic, we may be able to balance that a little better and by 
adjusting the wire length um, on the secondary. Currently the wire length um, at the through the telescopic fine adjustment at the top of the extra coil and the secondary coil is about equal. It's quite close. If I considerably increase the wire length, obviously the series modes are now adjusted. The parallel modes are a little bit closer in balance. Go even further. Parallel modes are a little bit closer. We can go to full extension. Hmm. Not much change really, so bringing it back down again, getting it into the right tune point. Almost back to the right wire length. There we are, 1.86 mega cycles. So this, this coil is now optimally set up um, for using with a linear amplifier generator at the lower series mode which basically belongs to the secondary coil. We can drive it at 1.86 megacycles here. We could drive it at four as well, 2.89 megacycles. Energy would of course be coupled in the system. So we would get energy at 1.86 megacycles. But um, not as much as if we were to drive it directly since we want to run in the 160 meter amateur band, best to run directly at this lower series mode. We could of course run on the parallel modes as well if we were using a something like a power uh, feedback oscillator, uh, but for maximum control in these kinds of transference of electric power experiments, it's best driven through um, a linear amplifier. If we look at marker two, our impedances 15 around about 15.4 ohms so we will need some matching with the linear amplifier um, as well in order to optimize the transfer of power in the transverse mode remember the we are driving in the linear amplifier will be driving the primary in the transverse mode it's basically a half wave coil at the primary and we do that transformation from the transverse mode to the longitudinal mode across the Tesla transformer and into the cavity. Just pause that. So this system is now for its geometry and setup and size is the optimum configuration um, of these coils to drive in the 160 meter amateur band at the lower series mode, I, I have got control over which cavities I want to um, emphasize for the LMD mode, both with the extra and the primary and the secondary and the primary. Um, and those very much can be adjusted during the transference of electric power experiments. So this coil I will be using, as I said, for the UK um, part of the transatlantic telluric experiments. At, in this configuration, um, I'll be running it in the generator lab where I've got the big um, big ground system um, outside. And really this brings us to a point now where we have optimally, optimally moved a two-core system or tuned a two-core system to be a three-core system, operating in the same band at the same series frequency simply by adjusting wire length, by adjusting a geometric position, by adjusting primary tuning and adjusting number of turns on the primary, we bring into an optimum scenario for a three coil system. Great, okay, uh, that concludes the video experiment for today. I will be doing more in the write-up. I will, I will put the um, scans from the GDA-SAQ 
um, VNA. Um, and then I will be doing the large signal experiments um, in the preliminary setup for the transatlantic experiments. And I will summarise those in a different video experiment um, with a different write up. Great, that's cylindrical three coil system with Tesla's extra coil.